So today, we are going to ask this question and think, what if the next Messi can come from Madras? So let's start with the story of these two boys. So these boys are now in their 40s, 70s uh, age kids. One of them is from Chennai. And in the second picture, the middle one uh, is from Mumbai. And they are both very, very successful now. And I had the opportunity to meet both of them this week. And I asked them, and in case you are wondering, the first one is Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google. And the second one is our own Sachin Tendulkar. So I asked them what they thought about their fourth standard timetable. <laughs> no, of course, I'm kidding. I didn't ask them about that. But imagine for a minute if I had asked them, what would Sachin have told? So Sachin would have complained that, hey, this entire timetable is actually built for people like Sundar, who study well and go to Stanford and Wharton. And in the whole week, there is only one PT period. Right? And of course, as parents, we all want our kids to be as successful as Sundar. But what about the poor Sachin? So I want you to think. Today, a Sachin Tendulkar is actually successful in India in spite of the system, not because of it. And for every Sachin that is successful, we have hundreds of people who have not made it. And there is a story of Anil Gurav, who was the rising batsman in Mumbai before Sachin, like he was called the Viv Richards of Mumbai. Sachin used to take batting tips from him. And unfortunately, he couldn't be a successful, as successful as Sachin because of his family conditions, of uh, his financial situation. So we lose hundreds of champions like Anil, and, and we, some of the lucky ones like Sachin uh, managed to make it in spite of the system. Now let's talk about football. Okay, we all know that in India, cricket is a religion, right? It's the most popular sport around the world. Two and a half billion people actually follow it. And India, and cricket is probably the only sport where sports people make money in India. But if you take football, four billion people are fans of football, and, and it's the most popular sport in the world, but India actually ranks 103 of the list of 211 nations that play football. And what I want to talk to you about today is something historic that happened last year when the World Cup of uh, football happened. Like there was one tiny nation, Iceland, that qualified for the World Cup. Many of you may not be aware of why it is historic. And let me tell you that the entire population of Iceland is 3.38 lakh people. That's almost the population of Velachin. <laughs> so, the coach of the Iceland cricket, uh, football team is actually a dentist. His main job is a, is a dentist. And many players are actually not professional players. They have other jobs, like uh, they are bankers, they are uh, movie producers, they are teachers. And in Iceland, you have to play football between May to November. Why? Because it's ice after that. So it's freezing after November. So how can, how did a small nation like Iceland actually manage to do this impossible feat of qualifying for the World Cup? Well, it all started uh, 12 years ago when they decided that football is good for the economy and uh, the government decided that they wanted to play in the World Cup. So they actually built seven indoor football fields where they can play all year around. They made sure that every school had an all-weather football field, like more than 500 such fields were built all around Iceland. They had more than 400 coaches who were UEFA B licensed coaches. And for your reference, an A licensed coach trains professional soccer teams. A B licensed coach is very good. And these B licensed coaches were training the, uh, the school children. So they were able to do this. It took them almost eight to 10 years. And also, uh, we should remember that in 2008, in the, when the financial crisis happened, Iceland went bankrupt. But that didn't stop them from making the investment in football. So they continued, and that is how they actually um, 
qualified uh, for the World Cup, which was remarkable if you think about it. And meanwhile, when all of this was happening in Chennai, I met two of these people who are here in the auditorium, Arindam and Joseph. So both of them are MBA grads, like most of us who loved playing sport, but then uh, did their MBA, engineering and MBA, and went into uh, uh, a bank job or a, a sales job. But in 2006, they decided that enough is enough, and they quit their corporate lives and actually started a football training center. While the training business was going on, uh, I met Arindam two years ago, and he was trying to do something really, really special. So he wasn't satisfied with running a training business. He wanted to build an elite team, and he wanted to start small. He wanted to start with young uh, kids. He, was, he, was, uh, he rented an apartment in Thirwanmuir. He had identified five talented uh, children. He was paying for their school and their lodging, and he called it the academy. While he had the dreams and the passion, he didn't have the resources, but his passion was enough to inspire a few people to really uh, work towards that dream. So we started asking, what if we could have a fully residential football academy in Chennai that can provide nutritional food, education, and high-performance training to the children who want to play football? Is it really hard to build a team of passionate coaches who are willing to dedicate their lives to training these uh, young boys, how hard would it be to actually get a full-size international standard artificial turf football field in Chennai? Well, actually, it turns out it was a little bit hard to get it in Chennai, and uh, you know, get, to get it in the heart of the city is even uh, harder. But when the right people come together with the right intention, it is possible. And if we scout through the corners of India, can't we find a talented team who's capable of training with us for, say, five, six, seven, eight years, play as one team to really make sure that we have a champion team in the making? So I think uh, a lot of times it is important to understand that a, a young team has to play together for several years before they can become world champions. And these kind of things don't happen overnight. So you have to put in the years of effort. And for all of us to understand how much does it take for one sports person to come, what it takes to get one Dhoni out and, and make him a champion. And a lot of people have actually helped Dhoni be the champion that we have, uh, be the champion that he is. What we want to do with FC Madras is save our champions from the railways or from the banks or from the IT companies. <laughs> so we want to send Badri to Barcelona. We want to send Ranganathan to Real Madrid because we really believe that we can get the next Messi from Madras because inside the heart of every gully boy who is playing football in India, there is a voice screaming, Apna time aega. Thank you for that. <laughs>